Hi everybody, it's Ann Quinn with Carnegie Public Library and I'm here to tell about two books that have made such a huge impression on me and how much I enjoyed them and I'd like to share it with you. The first one is a children's book, probably perfect for second through third grade, called Skunk and Badger by Amy Timberlake and the pictures are by John Classen who is a wonderful illustrator. This is one of those books that's very special when it comes across your desk. I wasn't aware of it. It just was published this year in 2020 and it came across the desk and I picked it up and I started thumbing through it and I was immediately enchanted by the story of a badger who does very important work with rocks. He's a bit of a geologist and he has a friend, Skunk, who comes to visit with them and all kinds of trouble happens, as you can imagine, a skunk and a badger living together. This book just knocked my socks off. I, um, I love a gentle children's book read, and some of them that are just so outstanding, it just shouts out that begs to be read. And so I devoured this book in about 30 minutes. And it's such a wonderful, sweet story that people of all ages can enjoy it. I gave it to my mother to read. Uh, the staff and the children's department has read this book. It's just so much fun and it's so sweet and it's so dear. But occasionally serendipity steps in and something really exciting happens because I got to the end of the book and I saw in the author's acknowledgments in the back, she wrote about a book called The Canon a whirly gig tour of the beautiful basics of science. And she used some of the information from this book to inform the writing of Skunk and Badger. And then just something inside of me said, hmm, I like the title of that book. I'd like to read it. So I ordered the book mentioned in the back of Skunk and Badger, the canon, by Natalie Angier, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's the Whirly Gig Tour of the Beautiful Basics of Science. And I have to tell you that for me, to get excited about science is something major indeed. And when I got this book just a few days ago, I started reading it and I could actually feel, I know this sounds like a major exaggeration, I could feel my brain and my heart actually starting to thrum. That's a good word, I like thrum. I could feel like a vibration happening throughout my body because what I was reading was so exciting and so thrilling. Now what's amazing about that is that you have to know I hate science. I have never been a good science student. I was always bored by science all the way through school, which is a shame because my father was a soil scientist and my sister was a superstar in science, but there was something about the way science was taught to me back in the late 60s and early 70s. It was pretty, pretty boring. And I think a lot of it was because back then they taught mainly vocabulary words. So you didn't learn the whys or the wherefores or why science can be exciting. It was just sort of rote memorization of RNA, DNA, chlorophyll, chloroplasts, electromagnetic waves, an instant snooze for me. I can still remember my seventh grade science class, Coach Bellapani's room in Leland, Mississippi, and this is in the late 60s, and every Friday afternoon he would show an eight millimeter movie of some boring, terrifically boring science topic. And I can remember some high school student would trudge down the hallway with this giant cart, with this giant projector, with the eight millimeter film, reel to reel, and the teenager would come in and set up the film, and this is Mississippi, and it's hotter than heck, and it's Friday afternoon, and we have no air conditioning in the schools, and so they close the blinds though, so the room is dark, and so we can watch the film. And every Friday, the entire seventh grade science class would fall asleep to these science movies, and they would be like such dull subjects like um, the water drop, water cycle. I mean, just s things that would put anybody to sleep. So it's after lunch, it's hot, it's dark in the room, and we have to watch this movie. And they always had like really strange music that went along with these film strips. And I can remember like just like looking out of the classroom and the teacher and probably three-fourths of the classroom would be sound asleep. 
uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes into the film. And that's what I remember about seventh grade science. I didn't learn a heck of a lot, but we got good naps in every Friday afternoon. So um, also the other thing is that these films were probably about 20 years old. They were like vintage post-World War II movies. So they were really dull and boring for somebody in the, uh, going to school, middle school in the, in the late 60s and um, early 70s. That's what I remember about science. It would put me to sleep. It was dull. It was boring. So you can imagine my incredible surprise that through serendipity, I was drawn to this book. What are the chances that I would find this book, read it, and become absolutely 100% totally fascinated by it and finding it by an author's note in the back of a children's book? To me, this is, was just more than a coincidence. This was just fantastic. Um, this author, Natalie Angier, I believe, uh, has won a Pulitzer Prize for her science writing. That to me was some of the most difficult part about science. I never found it interesting. The writing itself in a textbook, it could not capture my attention. It was just, again, a bunch of rote words that I didn't know the definitions to. I would memorize it for a test, probably forget what it meant. And I feel like I've been cheated out on life by not understanding uh, the principles of science that, that surround us. And so when you come across a book that can so quickly absolutely change your mind about a subject, then you know you have a magnificent book and magnificent writing. I just want to read you one or two blurbs on the back of this book that perhaps can capture better than what I can tell you about what a, an incredible writer Natalie is. Uh, Richard Dawkins writes, every sentence sparkles with wit and charm, but there's passion in there too, and it adds up into an intoxicating cocktail of the finest science writing. And that's why I said immediately this book captured me and I could actually feel vibrations happening throughout my body. It was so exciting to read what she had to say about science. It made me want to go back to school, become a science major. It was, it's that terrific of writing. I'm not through with it yet because I found out sometimes with nonfiction, I have to slow the rate of my reading down. When I'm going through fiction, I zip through it super, super fast. But this compels you to slow your rate of reading down so that you get all the little substantive information that's in there. But to me, this author has such a gift of being able to take down which is potentially a very boring subject and make it appealing to a broad population. So this is not just for people that are interested in science. I say that this is a great book for people who've always kind of turned their nose up at science and found it kind of boring. So I'm so excited about this book. I'm gonna make sure that the library owns it. In fact, I'm so excited about the canon that I'm gonna to have to have my very own copy for my shelves. And I guarantee you I'm gonna buy every other book that uh, this author has written because she has such a power over language to distill information down into such an exciting, uh, informative way. Um, I also want to give a shout out, though, to those science teachers that I didn't get to have when I was a teacher. I mean, when, when I was a student, I didn't have uh, access to wonderful science teachers, but I want to give a special shout out to a science teacher in Washington Middle School, uh, Mrs. Gerber. She teaches eighth grade science. And the way or the reason I know her is besides coming to the library a lot, every year she invites the Carnegie staff to participate in her Are You Smarter Than the Eighth Grade? Um, Are You Smarter Than the Eighth Grader? And this is a prep class that um, she gives at the very end of the year to help the students go over all the year's material. She invites adults to come in because it's a fun kind of competitive uh, class to see. We pit knowledge against each other. and. I would always participate, even though I'm miserable in science. The kids were really wonderful at giving me the answers that I didn't know. But what I observed and what I did see was that how Mrs. Gerber captured the imagination of everybody in the classroom. And I could see that the kids were fully 100% engaged. And I contrasted that to my experience in a middle school. And 
Um, so I want to give a big shout out to Mrs. Gerber for making science interesting, to making it fun. And uh, I would like to challenge, I know there's many, many other science teachers in both school systems that do a marvelous job of teaching science concepts. And one of the things that I thought would be interesting is that if I could challenge some of the teachers uh, in their classrooms, if they come across an experiment or they learn something that just knocked their socks off, I would love to get a five minute video of what you've learned or to watch an experiment. And I'd like to show it on our library website to share with, with other people. Because after reading this, I'm on a mission now. I wanna make science accessible and fun for everybody so you don't miss out on all the decades I missed out on not appreciating the beauty of science. So rarely have I come across a book that has moved me this powerfully. And so I have only the highest praise for it. So all you science geeks out there, and even those of you that are not science geeks, I like to hear from you. I would like to hear a funny story about maybe a science class that you had growing up, but I also would like to see some really cool science experiments. And Mrs. Gerber, way to go. I really enjoy your classroom. And please invite us next spring. Well, if we can get in because of COVID, but I want to participate again. It's so much fun. So again, these two books just wild me to the nth degree, one for younger kids and then one for uh, the adults that uh, I would like to really hear from people to see if it made as profound impact on you as it did on me. So enjoy. Thank you.